My dear respected brothers and sisters and dear viewers of Imam Hussein TV, wherever you may be, and welcome to another episode of taking lessons from the life of the Lady of Light and inshallah implementing them into our lives today. Now one of the institutions that is seen as blessed and sanctified in the religion of Islam is the institution of marriage. We know that the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, and the Ahlul Bayt continuously propagated getting married, especially to the youth. Now today, especially in the West, marriage is arguably a dying concept, with divorce rates at record levels. And in the UK, for example, a whopping 41% of marriages in England and Wales end in divorce. Now, this is due to a variety of factors, but perhaps one antidote that Islam prescribes are the outlying the duties of the husband towards the wife and vice versa. Lady Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, who we are commemorating on these nights, was the best of wives to her husband, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali alayhi salam, who was the best of husbands towards her. Their marriage is seen as one that is exemplary in Islamic history with many lessons to take on board from it. And now in today's episode of Lessons from the Lady of Light, we'll be exploring how we can look after our spouses like Lady Fatima alayhi salam looked after Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, whether we are good husbands or good wives. And to help me dissect this topic is our beloved guest, Sheikh Noor Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, Habib. I'm now, good. MashaAllah, last week we prayed for me, inshaAllah, to get married. Inshallah. And you picked this topic to, inshaAllah, discuss <laughs> that's tonight. That's barakah, that's barakah. Barakah, ahsentum, <laughs> ahsentum. Now, Sheikhna, the first question that I think the dear viewers would want to pose to you yeah. is, what is the duty of a husband towards their wife in Islam? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen, habibi ilahi al-alameen. Abil Qasim al Mustafa Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala ahli baytihi al Guru al Mayamin al Muntajabin. No doubt, marriage is one institution that we cannot think of any progress within our communities without referring to the institution of marriage. Every goodness that we see begins and emanates from marriage. Mm. It is not just about getting married. It's how you get married and how you live side by side. Okay. And you remember very well our dear viewers in our last episode when discussing the status of our parents within the religion of Islam. Mm -hmm. We looked at a tradition where the Holy Prophet mentioned when marriage is being officiated or solemnized, the doors of heaven are wide opened, which is of great importance. Mm. For marriage to be a good marriage, for marriage to achieve every success which Islam expects it to achieve, we need to understand the rights of one another. Not appreciating each other's rights within a given marriage. It simply means once marriage will not thrive and will not be able to achieve the purpose and the objectives of marriage within the religion of Islam. Because mm -hmm. Islam has objectives as to why it encourages us to get into the institutions of marriage. Mm. Now, when discussing the rights within marriage, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, there are different forms of rights. We've got common rights. In other words, it is both on the shoulder of the husband and the wife. Mm -hmm. And then we have specific rights. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know? So the first common right which Islam really prescribes, okay. meaning husband is expected to follow it and wife likewise, mm-hmm. is to live in harmony. Okay. Mu'ashara. Yeah. Is to live and interact in a positive way. Mm. Quran will tell us, Ashuruhunna bil ma'roof. Stay with them in kindness or with kindness. Mm-hmm. One Quran even says that even if you are to divorce, do it in kindness. Mm. Do it in kindness. That's a bit difficult in this day and age. In this day and age. Yeah. Because of maybe lack of proper understanding of what Islam is. Mm. And sometimes you'll not say because of lack of proper understanding, but because of what is leading to that divorce. Yeah. Could be from an abusive relationship, for instance. Yeah. Violence Mm -hmm. is the slogan of that relationship. Or maybe just people in your ear. Just people too much. Yeah. Ted forces. Yeah. Which, inshallah, I'm sure we'll look at it later on in this episode. So therefore, Mu'asharatul Hasana. Live side by side mm. with in kindness. That's number one. Number two, ihtiramul mutabadil. Mutual respect. Yeah. It is the right of a woman to be respected by her husband. Of course. And vice versa. Mm-hmm. In other words, you don't talk to her anyhow. You don't talk to him anyhow. You don't relate to him anyhow. He doesn't relate to you anyhow. Respect is the right of all within marriage. Ihtiram al mutabadil. And if you look at the marriage of Imam Amir al Mu'minin and the Lady of Light, there is Ihtiram al Mutabadil. Amir al Mu'minin Ahsantum respected and honored the Lady of Light mm-hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. Hence, he would say to her, you've never angered me. Mm. And she would say to him, you are the best of all husbands. That is number two. So, ihtiram is very, very important. The third right is al-ihtimam. Wa'adam al-ihmal. Show concern. Do not ignore. Very, very important. Of course. You come sitting on your phone and she's telling you something you're ignoring her. Yeah. You're busy watching your football games or whatever you're watching. Sheikh, no, don't take football away from us. Uh, we don't taking it away from you, but sometimes the football is taking away the right of our Wallah, women. Wallah, it's one day a week. Even it is a minute a week. <laughs> sometimes you find during these big tournaments, mm. women cry. Yeah. They complain that my husband is so dedicated to watching his football. But when it comes to my birthday, for example, when it comes to something that I need done in the family, it's not there. No, of course, there has to be a balance. Ah, santo. Yeah. So it is not one-sided, two-sided. Mm. Whereby a woman show concern. al ihtimam wa adam al ihmal is of great importance. Of course. The other right is what? Is to protect one another. Mm-hmm. On different levels. Protect his iman, protect her iman. Yeah. Provide her with security, which is the right of woman, even if she is the richest woman of the world. Wow. It is her God-given right that you provide for her. Financial security. Ah, santo! Wow. Provide accommodation, provide clothing, provide, you know, health, her need. Yeah. Of great importance. Unless if she says to you, you know what, I will share. Mm. I will provide. Don't worry. It means what she's telling you, I'm forfeiting my right. Don't worry. Mm. You can do it. But it is the right of a woman for her husband to provide for her. Mm. What I sometimes see in Hal, this is common. A husband will look at his wife and say, you know what? You earning, I'm earning. Yeah. If you don't put so much, I will not do anything. Oh. This sometimes leads to a serious fight. Of course. Tension from the start. Tension. But don't forget, my dear brother and my dear, my dear brother, to be specific, it is the right of your wife mm. to provide for her. Mm-hmm. Of course, based on your capability, 
yeah. because Quran says ليُنفق ذو ساعة من ساعته ومن قدر عليه رزقه فليُنفق مما أتاه الله لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما أتاه سيجعل الله بعد عسر يسرا الله ليُنفق ذو ساعة من ساعته you provide based on your circumstance mm -hmm. the more you have the more you provide the less you have, the less you provide. Mm -hmm. And Islam expects a woman to understand the circumstance of her husband, mm -hmm. not to demand what he cannot afford. When there is a challenge in your wealth, in your sustenance, in the source of your sustenance, give what you are able to do from what is given to you by Allah. Because Allah will not impose on you what you can't afford. Mm. But otherwise, it is the right of a woman for a husband to provide for her. Mm. So these are some of the rights that Islam really discusses when it comes to marriage. Now, Shekhan, you mentioned pretty common basic rights that, that a husband has a duty, the wife has the same duty, yeah. and you mentioned sustenance for yeah. the husband. Yeah. What duty does the woman have towards her husband yeah. that the husband doesn't have towards her? That's very, very important. Mm. You see, a woman, from the Islamic perspective, yeah. is a source of tranquility in the family. Mm -hmm. Source of sukun, Source of peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Primary duty of a woman is to be a means of sukun mm. in the house. It doesn't mean that husband doesn't have a duty. Yeah. But his major duty is to provide. Yeah. But her major duty is to become a source of tranquility, mm. a source of peace. That's very, the hands Quran says, Let us ilayha. So that you dwell in them. Ilayha mm. meaning in her, in the wife. Yeah. She's a source of peace and sukun, which is of great importance, mm. baby. Of course. Now, if you look at sukun and peace, there are so many dimensions which it has, isn't it? So yeah. a woman knows that. Yeah, yeah. And she has to try as much as she can to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. Now, Sheikhna, the, the question on everyone's mind is, yeah. Fatima Fatim Zahra alayhi salam, let's put aside that she's a ma'soom. No, no. Let's put that aside. No. Let's put aside Imam Ali alayhi salam is a, is a ma'soom, no. infallible. No. Some of the duties she carried out as a mother, as a wife, are some of the duties that our our sisters are carrying out today? Yeah. What makes what takes her to a level which no woman can reach? Asantum. What took her to that level? That's a very important question, Habibi Minhal. Obviously, mm. there will never be any other Fatima. Never. Never. And if there wasn't Fatima, there wouldn't be anyone for Amir al-Mu'minin, alayhi course. salam, as you know. Of course. But the question is a very valid question. What made her reach that level? Mm. I refer, my dear brothers and sisters, to her beautiful conversation with the, the beloved Prophet, when people were going to Prophet seeking her hand in marriage. Uh-huh, yeah. Prophet never imposed anyone on Fatima to Zahra, alayhi salam. Crucial lesson. Today we have parents out there. Oh. It's either my way or the motorway. <laughs> I would say highway. You tow or forget it. Oh, I'm 25. I've seen people, Brother Minhal, I'm not joking, in the line of my work, mm. where parents refused and they ended up marrying non-Muslims. Okay, fine, lesser harm. More parents refused and they ended up blocked the door of marriage in their lives. Since you stopped me from getting married with this one, I'm not going to get married anymore in my life. Whose sin is this? The sin of the parent. Mm -hmm. Let's emulate and follow the footsteps of the Holy Prophet. I understand you've got your values. Nobody says, don't let the values flourish and manifest, but do it reasonable. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important. So the Holy Prophet invited his beloved daughter of Fatima to Zahra, alayhi yeah. And he shared with her, as to how many people were coming to seek a hand in marriage. Baba is the daughter of Rasulullah, but of course. Even the enemy knew Rasulullah is Rasulullah. Yeah. <laughs> what was her response? 
To me, as a person, this is what took Fatima to the next level. Mm. The father asked her, what do you say? He mentioned Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. He mentioned others also. She said, I am for what pleases Allah and his messenger. Wow. Hmm. What pleases Allah and the messenger of Allah is what I want. But the messenger of Allah is asking Fatima the Zahra, what do you say? She said, what Allah and you are happy I am. Meaning what? Let Allah be central to our relationships and marriage. Yeah. Habibi Minhal, when there is Allah, we will treat each other fairly. When there is Allah, we will give each other the rights each one deserves. Mm. Because I know it is not only this world. I'm going to be questioned about it yeah. when I depart from this. You know, Habibi, if there is something which is very difficult that we need to pay special atten attention to, it's marital rights. Can make life very difficult for us, Abibi Minhal. I mean, look at Islam. Islam says, How? what is between me and you, Minhal? Allah will not interfere until you forgive me. Yeah. 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 What is between us and Allah? It's easy. Allah, Ghafur Rahim. But for example, things like riba and that kind of stuff. I take your right. Yeah. So long as you do not forgive me. And if I intentionally ignore you by not asking for your forgiveness, Allah is not going to forgive me. Mm. How many injustices we commit in our marriages? We are going to be questioned about it. So central to the marriage of the lady of light is God. Mm. So therefore, scholars, you know, when they discuss the pages of the house of Fatima, mm. they look at four major pages. Okay. And really, these pages are what we need to really look for yeah. when we are in marriages or aspiring to get married. Because sure. at the end of the day, as you pointed out, you pointed it out, Brother Minhal, there are challenges within our marriages. Of course. People are going through a lot when it comes to their marriages. Mm. Some are able to navigate through. Majority are struggling, Habibi. Yeah. The rate of divorce is escalating. The first page, which can have a majority sessions, okay. from the house of the Lady of Light is what? She focused on values and not on material. But that's difficult. <laughs> now that now that you say that, it's it's a very difficult time to be alive right now. It's not be easy. Because it's doable, but it's not easy. It's doable, but you have the world of social media and our sisters are seeing all these let's say models that are dressing up in the yeah. best of clothes. This she hears this person has bought a bag for I don't know, two thousand pounds, Gucci, Louis Vuitton. Boss. Boss is okay. Boss is Rolex. Boss is Mesquite Boss is now. It's, it's not Rolex. <laughs> and those kinds of things. So they see that mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given tawfiq to some families. Absolutely. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And some families, he's given them tawfiq, but not to the scale that these guys yeah, have had it. Different levels. Different levels. And she sees that. As her friend from this family is able to spend freely and go to bed sleeping comfortably. But if she was to spend half the amount she spends, she will stay up all night and she won't be able to sleep. It's as if she drank coffee all day. <laughs> Cappuccino. <laughs> Cappuccino, mocha, Americano. So, Sheikh uh, what's Habibi. the solution to that? Habibi, the solution is what? Let me tell you something, Habibi. You made some very valid points. Mm. Number one, yes, it's not easy. But it came from the heart. Yes, absolutely. I could see. <laughs> it's a very sincere point. It's not easy, yeah. but it's doable. Mm -hmm. How doable if you want it to happen? You know, there is this quote expression cut your coat according to your size. You know, the main killer of our life today is instant gratification. Yeah. What will people say? Mm. We want people's approval. 
That's very, very, be yourself. You know, people sometimes out there will tell you, believe in yourself, but still they don't believe in themselves. Yeah. They look at what others are saying. Mm. For instance, somebody will post something, if no likes, the person they, cannot sleep. No, they delete it. Absolutely. <laughs> They'll post it in the morning Absolutely. when everyone else is awake. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 I met people asking me, but why nobody is liking it? I said, Baba, you've got a thousand people as friends. They've all seen it. Don't worry about liking. Yeah. So we need to cut our coats mm. according to your size. Look at your circumstance and go according to your circumstance. You'll mm -hmm. be free. Don't be slave in this world. Don't imprison yourself. When you have the risk higher level, why not enjoy it mm. in a lawful way and also think of the plight of the poor and needy. Yeah, of course. But please, my dear brothers and sisters, if there is one killer in what we are doing today in our lives, is seeking people's approval. We are living in Haroe, but they are now living in central London. Mm. Why can't you move to central London? Mm. Baba, he can't afford. Or the woman is any more than him. So why can't we move in central London? No, cut your coat according to your size. Like you can live for Allah. So the point is, why am I saying Fatima, alayhi salam, focused on values? Mm. What do I mean by that? You see, the father was the head of Muslim states. Yeah. The entire Islamic treasure was under him. Treasury was under him. Mm -hmm. He could have pulled any amount. Of course. For the marriage of Fatima. Mm. He could have done it. Arab, that time, they were also enjoying their lives. Yeah. But it was in moderation. Mm -hmm. Today, Habib Ibn Hal, I see it happening. People will borrow money for their weddings. And six months, one year after the wedding, they are struggling. For reception. Yes, sir, baby. This is a reality. It is happening in our communities. So in, in that case, in that yeah. case, what would you say yeah. that couples watching this right now yeah. can learn from the life, from, from the marriage of Imam Ali alayhi salam so and Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam? Because Sheikh, let's be honest, yeah. you, you do more marriages yeah, yeah. than I've probably been to weddings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've seen the, the crazy amounts of mahar requested Absolutely. and all that too kind of much, stuff. Too much. And now, when, I, when a person like me, who isn't married, 21 years old, I want to get married and I approach a family, they say, Mullah, our mahar is, let's say, 15, 20,000 pounds. Baba, I'm still at the beginning of my life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then they come at you and say, oh, no, we don't want him. Why? Because, you know, he, he does X, Y, and Z outside of, you know, outside of the community yeah. and that kind of stuff. But you've prevented me from getting married. Absolutely. Absolutely. So where, where, where do I find the... You see, the main criteria, Habibi Minhal, and dear viewers, is modesty. Khairun mm. niqah aysaruha. The best of all marriages. Is the most affordable one. It's the simplest one. It's not the amount of money you throw. Read on nasi gayat Allah to darak. It's a saying. People's pleasure is a destination no one will reach. Mm. The same people who will say, "Mashallah, look at the amount of money the reception was in Central London. You know, it's unbelievable. They invited so and so. The food was bland. Yeah, they will eat, talk, and go. When there are issues tomorrow." None of them will be able to solve the problem. Mm. Cut. You know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he advised on who to get married with, he mentioned so many things. One of them, Lejamaliha, for instance. Yeah. She's beautiful. I want my son and daughter to be beautiful, to look mm -hmm. glamorous. Why not? Mm -hmm. No problem. Lejamaliha. Fantastic. Go for it. The second one, Lemaliha. No, she's rich. He is rich. I want to go for it. Why not? The third one, Lena Sabiha, her family. Yeah. Mashallah, she's got a good family name. Mashallah, they are the aristocrat of Wembley, for instance. <laughs> you know. They live in London. Yeah. They live in Porsche, in the community. The father has been the president of the community, the chairman of the community, the secretary, top-notch lawyer, top -notch, fine. But, Lidiniha. Then Prophet said, Alayka bithati dini taribati yadaka. Allah. Wow. Allah. 
Go for the deen, the akhlaq, the love for Allah, the love for Ahl al bayt mm -hmm. you will be protected. Why? Scholars expounded on this nicely. Yeah. When you go for beauty, for example, we all love beauty. Of course. Beauty relative. Something may be beautiful in your eye, might not be beautiful in my eye, but definitely everybody loves beauty. It's a nature. We've yeah. got that sense of beauty. Yeah. Which we've got a beautiful discussions also there, out there. Mm -hmm. Now, when you just go for beauty, when the beauty is no more, then you may end up cheating. Yeah. Our creation is not yet over. Anything can happen, Habibi. Of course. Ah. So therefore, as you go for beauty, complement it with deen. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, you go, Limaliha. We've seen heroes to zero. And we've seen zeros oh, to hero. <laughs> yeah. Subhanallah. Coronavirus made people to get retrenched, Habibi. People got fired. People without fellow, they were not going to live life, Habibi. Mm. So if you go for only wealth, only, I'm using the word only carefully. Yeah. So that somebody will come to the shangri and say, no, we shouldn't worry about money. No, no. But don't go for that only. Because when the money is no more there, you'll end up cheating. That's a family. Yeah. We've seen top-notch people at the helm Overnight, we wake up in the morning, wake up in the morning, no more day. No. But the deen, alayka bizaati deen. Hence, Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, advised fathers and mothers of sons who are aspiring to get married. Okay? Or fathers and mothers of the daughters who are aspiring to get married. Iza ja'akum man tardawna deenahu wa khulkahu fazawiju illa tafa'alu takun fitnatun fil ardi wa fasadun kabira. If he comes to you, someone you are pleased. That's big. Big minar. You are pleased with his religion, deen. You are pleased with his akhlaq. Faza we do. Marry him. Give the dua to him. If not, takun fitna Today we see fitna. Trials. Uncountable marital trials and tribulations. Wa yeah. fasad on kabir. Social media fasad. So therefore, sure. modesty. Yeah. And look at your circumstance. This lady is within my means. Mm. This gentleman is within my means. We can relate. Yeah. We can build life That's together. Sense. We can build civilization together. That's Communicate sense. before you get married. Parent, don't just say this and that. Communicate. And I know our parents are sincere. They want to protect their sons and daughters. Yeah. But sometimes... Be a bit open-minded. That's one. So another page of the House of Fatima is what? Which we mentioned, mm -hmm. they respected one another. Another one is, it was at Ta'awan. They supported each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you wouldn't leave the Lady of Light alone to help in the house and to do everything. At least we know the wire. That says he would bring water from outside, water, mm -hmm. and she would help so that's very important. And last but not least, they cooperated in children are bringing. Inshallah, Ahsant, Ahsant, Sheikhna. Inshallah, the uncles who are listening to this right now take the advice of the Sheikh and don't cause fitna on this earth. And my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to thank Sheikh, Sheikh Nur Muhammad, for this beautiful episode. And inshallah, we will see you on the next episode as we continue to take lessons from the Lady of Light, from her life and implement them into our lives today. Inshallah, after this break, we will have Mulla Ali Fadl bless us with his beautiful recitation. Stay tuned. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh dear respected brothers and sisters and dear viewers of Imam Hussein TV and welcome back thank you so much for joining us after that short break as we discussed with Sheikh Nur Muhammad the ideal spouse and how spouses should look after each other now as always for the past three nights we've been blessed with the recitation of Mullah Ali Fadl and tonight the fourth night is no different and we say to the Mullah, Assalamu alaikum Mullah. Alaikum assalam How alhamdulillah. are you? I'm good, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, alhamdulillah. It's a pleasure to be here, by the way, on, on these consecutive nights. It's uh, uh, actually going through the poetry. I wanted to make sure that each night is dedicated to a different topic around Fatima mm. Zahra. So today um, is, is, is Imam Ali's um, sorrow 
uh, but specifically when he is washing the body of Fatim Zahra mm -hmm. And again, written by Nuri Sardar, it's literally just meant the, 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 the poem is called Al Karar. And it's Al Karar who killed Marhab, cries touching her broken rib. Ali al karrar who killed Marhab, Christ touching her broken rib. Ali al karrar who killed Marhab, Christ touching her broken rib. The sun sets and is silent. There is no one that's patient. As hearts break for this moment, the one who sees Ali aches. The one who sees Ali aches, named Haidar by his mother, killed thirty-five at Badr and raised the gate of Khaybar. When finding her rib, he shakes. He sits curled up and crying, the Lion of God wailing, and every cry is asking, How can Fatima's rib break? How can Fatima's rib break? Ali al Karar killed Marhab, Christ touching her broken rib. Ali al Karar killed Marhab, Christ touching her broken rib. A tragedy has fell He sheds tears that shake the ground Every time they hear a sound The sound of her rib breaking The sound of her rib breaking Her rib reaches his finger The thought of it is torture He cannot bear to touch her the door he's remembering, the door he's remembering Between the door and the wall, the one from heaven would fall And when for help she would call, for Ali she'd be screaming for Ali she'd be screaming Ali al Karra who killed Marhab Christ touching her broken rib Ali al Karra who killed Marhab Christ touching her broken rib At Khaybar Ali would stand At Khaybar Ali would stand The moon upon earth would land He raised the gate with his hand but he couldn't touch her in The one who never felt fear Is tortured by every tear He wishes he wasn't here And was still fighting Marhab And was still fighting Marhab Give Ali any battle, any pain, any trial Just no rib and no nail And no Mohsin's empty crib And no Mohsin's empty crib Ali al Karar who killed Marhab Christ touching her broken rib Ali al Karar who killed Marhab Christ touching her broken rib When he holds her and he cries I see stars fall from the skies The sun sets and doesn't rise Because Ali is in pain Because Ali is in pain To a grave he carries her where he walks, roses with her above him, the sky shatter, and upon Zahra they rain, and upon Zahra they rain. Ali lowers her body, but look at this tragedy when her body he'd bury, feels a rib again. Ali lowers her body. But look at this tragedy When her body he'd bury He feels her rib again He feels her rib again Ali al-Karrar who killed Marhab Christ touching her broken rib Ali al-Karrar who killed Marhab Christ touching her broken rib Many thanks to the poets
Nouri Sardar. Ahsant, Ahsant, Mulla Tayyab Allah and Fazak. And as always, we would like to thank our dear respected guests, Sheikh Nouru Muhammad and Mulla Ali Fadl. Inshallah, join us tomorrow for the finale, the final episode of this five night series on the Lady of Light, taking lessons from her life and implementing them into our life. But from me and the team here at Imam Hussein TV, we bid you Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. الصديقة الشهيدة